Didn't get the win down in Tampa. Tough start in your career versus Todd Bowles, not going to lie. But what did you think about Jaden Daniels' performance? You know, the statistics, the analytics, the confidence level, the things you can't measure, the things that you can. What did you think about Jaden's first debut here in the NFL? Well, I think it's such important context to note how many quarterbacks struggle just in general in week one around the league. Like it was not a a banner week for quarterback performance in the NFL. And we've sort of seen things trending that way. I think we are in a bit of a transition phase as some of the greats are faded out of faded out of the game in recent years. And we're trying to figure out who the next great young wave of quarterbacks will be. And some of those players are established and Washington is really hoping obviously that Jaden Daniels is one of those guys. And this was a rough first start um, in a lot of ways. You mentioned playing a Todd Bulls defense and especially the pressure aspect of that um, in terms of, you know, this wasn't a game where he took like a million sacks or anything like that, but he f- he played the game, I think, so sped up that it felt like he had kind of forecasted pressure before it even arrived in a lot of ways. Mm. He was really a one read and scramble. Um, if he didn't throw to his first read, he pretty much tried to get out of the pocket right away. Um, his running is exceptional, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but he has to kind of, as soon as the pocket isn't like a perfect condition, he's trying to get out of the pocket and he is trying to not make a play with his arm yet. And we'll see, obviously we're talking about one start. So this is going to evolve a lot. And one of the fun aspects for us is we're going to be able to come back weekly and see how it evolves. But for him right now, there wasn't a lot of passing on the move. A lot of it was getting out of the pocket and running and trying to scramble. And he did make some plays um, in that capacity, but If he's going to become a great quarterback, I think, for Washington, he has to be able to play within the context of what their offense asked him to do. There was a play in the second half. The Bucs blitz the nickel, and Luke McCaffrey, who was over the nickel in the slot, he kind of runs a quick hitch. He just calls for the ball. He's sitting in open space. Very common concept, um, this play structure. Daniels looks right at him. The nickel's coming, but he's not there yet. The blitz wasn't that well-timed, and he's wide open, and he doesn't throw it. Instead, he goes backside and to a dig on a, to Ertz, and Jordan Whitehead jumps it and breaks it up and, and could have could have probably intercepted it if he'd been there a second later, um, and there's kind of a collision ball there. So if you're going there, it has to be like right away, and really based on the structure of the play, he should be going to McCaffrey right away on that concept, and there was another play later in the game i didn't think he really understood his pre-snap indicators as well like the bucks had their corners rolled up right you're thinking press right away you're thinking man coverage right in that position at least is your first indicator um one safety's high and uh bryce hall rolled up in the slot against terry mclaurin who's running a vertical on the play so you're thinking it's man coverage your best wide receiver against a backup cornerback that never plays in the slot right and right away you you should know where your first option is right off the snap right and the safety moved off the hash to the sideline right off the snap um so it's everything he wants McLaurin kind of bends his route across the field away from the safety he dusts haul off the snap it's wide open no safety on the other side of the field whitehead was kind of rolled up there so the design was good you got your best player isolated against the guy who's never in the nickel and so i think that's going to be one of the aspects of it with Daniels is can he, he in that play specifically like he has the shot and he never throws the ball he tucks it and scrambles even though he's not even under pressure on the play yeah and so for him a lot of it's going to be what does he see pre-snap and then what does he do post-snap to respond to that and I think if he can figure out some of those things which those are all things that take time right physically he didn't look like no oh, his arms just so bad or he can't move like the way he did in college it's the mental part of the game and how fast everything was for him that was r- really created a huge struggle for him on Sunday. Yeah, and and I think that that was always going to take a little bit of time with Daniels, right? Because when you are as athletic as he is, it's very natural to say like, hey, if my first guy is not open, I'm not going to hang around an NFL pocket very long. I'm going to take off. I'm going to do something that I've been able to do well my entire life, which is running around. And you mentioned, okay, maybe not the best throwing on the run, but there were so many times when I was watching that game that he takes off to run, and I'm, like, holding my breath. Like, he's moving faster than everybody else. Like, that, to me, is going to be a true weapon of his game. So I get why he leans into it. But you mentioned, uh, you know, lack of success for Terry McLaurin, I, I, or I should say lack of production from Terry McLaurin. People were wondering where he was all game. They've got to get him more involved. But there were there was meat on the bone, I think, for Washington moving forward. So it's things that you could definitely get a little bit better at. And when you're coming from Washington's system to the NFL – it kind of makes sense that he would struggle a little bit with truly like getting to next progressions or, you know, the pre-snap indicators he, sh- he should have been able to do, but obviously it's an NFL debut. So I think that that will come to him pretty quickly. But you mm-hmm. think about the LSU offense. 
whether it was Brian Thomas Jr., Malik Neighbors, uh, even Lacey as well, their third wide receiver, like these dudes were just open. Like they were winning the one on one yeah. individual talent matchup so often. And when you look across the field, you don't exactly have that at the NFL level. So it does sort of make sense why it was like, uh, all right, one read, he didn't win immediately like Malik Neighbors used to or like Brian Thomas Jr. didn't. It's going to take Daniels a little bit more time to understand, like, we talk about NFL open, right? Like, that's it. Like, this guy is NFL open. And when you look at it, it might not be open the way that you think it is. There might not be a ton of separation there. But learning to trust his receivers when they are NFL open, if you will, I think um, will be a little bit of a a work in progress for him. But, I mean, is that something that you saw as well? Is that what you would kind of like to see from him in the short term moving forward? I think so, yeah. I mean, he's going to eventually have to get more comfortable throwing the football down the field. There was actually quite a few opportunities to do so in this game, and he really he only let one go. He let two go as the game went on. There was one that was pretty well covered. He threw the ball kind of 10 yards out of bounds. I don't know whether he – I mean, he could have put it in the field of play and given, his, given McLaurin a 50-50 shot. And then there was the go ball to open the second half, first play of the second half, I believe, that was over McLaurin's head. He beat Jamel Dean on a double move. Mm-hmm. Would have been a touchdown if he put it on him and he just overthrew him. So, right. you know, like, oh, those are fixable things. There were a couple other opportunities in the game to put the ball downfield that I didn't feel like he took. And so I think that more than anything for him, it's going to be like, you have to trust what your eyes are seeing. You have to get the ball out. Yes, the Bucs did not do a great job of containing him in the pocket, and so he was able to get out. And his athleticism, like I said, is for real. You mentioned it, you hold your breath, because you saw this guy get whooped in college a few times on big hits, and he's not the biggest guy, but man, is he tough. Like at the end of the game, if you're talking about positives, I just thought like the fact that he was this game's over right and he is like and they're calling quarterback runs on the goal line it's I mean like that's a whole nother podcast topic but Jaden Daniels is like putting his head down taking on three guys losing his helmet trying to strain to the goal line so I think his toughness I think guys are going to follow him I think he's got all those kind of traits like there's no fear you could see in his eyes of the game was like he didn't look overwhelmed I mean from if, like looking at him like at the end of the game knowing like how many things had gone wrong and how poor the day had been overall for them right offensively he didn't look like overwhelmed by that and obviously it's game one so you probably expect that but he looked like a guy who's still at his poise and his confidence and he played that way as the game went on too i think it's just going to be trusting what he sees and letting the ball rip because you're right mclaurin is the only dude in this passing attack but the concepts got some other guys open and mclaurin was open a bunch in this game and i didn't think that he trusted it and he instead opted to go rely on his legs right over and over again and so eventually you'd hope that part gets coached out i think or that he develops out of that phase it may be pretty rough sledding early on if he's not willing to let the ball go he's getting to other concepts late that should be kind of off his plate in terms of his process yeah 